Doesn't it need to have some green? It's so pretty. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's it video's over. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Laura. Today I'm going to take you on a tour through our city garden. Let's go! All right, so here we are out on the back porch. Just ignore the mess. I plant stuff all the time so there's always a mess. I've got my tadpoles here with some seedlings and thunder, hey thunder, and a couple of planter pots here. They all have like an herb and a couple of flowers. So this one's got some um, blue salvia and some wave petunias and some basil and a different type of salvia. And this one has basil and some bush beans and some pansies and coleus and nasturtium. And you can see there's a chamomile in here too. But this one I'm excited for because there's quite a few bush beans coming up and here this one's petunias and vinca and then coleus isn't that so pretty and then more of that blue um salvia and a different type of purple salvia these guys we brought those with us from the farm this is oxalis hopefully that one will come back and that's my cactus um and then here in this one we added swiss chard and um, petunias, blue salvia, and also some mint. I know mint shouldn't go with anything else because it'll take over, but I'll just keep pulling it back. It's pretty and it smells nice. And then in here, this big pot, we've got basil, some marigolds. This one's finally put out its first flower. Oh, I love this one. I'm so happy about it. Um, we've also got some bush beans and one of the leggy bits of the tomato that I like pulled out of this area. I shoved it into the ground and it rooted. So now we've got a extra tomato plant. There's also some bok choy back there and also my lemon cuttings from my lemon tree. Oh my gosh, they've like, oh my gosh, look at this. They have grown into <laughs> the soil. That's amazing. So that is what's on the porch. There's also a little castor bean back there. Can you see him? Ugh, here's one of his leaves. Oh, there, he's in there too. But that is the back porch. And now let's make our way to the first garden bed. So here is wild mint. This was in the bed before we got to it. And I've just been ripping it back to keep it small because it keeps trying to take over this whole space, obviously. Um, Swiss chard in here, some million bells. A lot of our leafy stuff has been really badly damaged. We've had a slug issue. You can see the damage on this bok choy. Um, no slugs on it right now. But anyway, this, you can see this white stuff scattered in here. That's a slug deterrent. Um, over here is my larkspur. I'm so excited about this. I've, I've never seen it before. It was one of the things we grew from seed together this spring, and it's finally starting to flower. Another lovely chamomile over here. Another nasturtium back there. Some more nasturtiums here. A coleus tucked in there. We've got some chives. More basil. Some shiso. Isn't it so pretty? Oh. I love this plant, it's so pretty. And it's like a useful herb, which is awesome. Back here we've got the one kale that doesn't seem to have any bug damage at all. Nice curly kale. This is bronze snapdragons. No blooms yet, but we're almost there. More of that blue salvia. Some lettuce leaf basil. Another one of those uh, snapdragons. Some more kale back here and some more basil. There's a lot of repeats in this garden. Coleus over there. And back here, I'm really happy about this. My calendula is just about to open. So happy and there's lots of blooms following behind. That's a Cosmo back there, a purple one. And that's a Cosmo there, an orange one. And look at this amaranth love lies bleeding. Obsessed. It's gonna get so much taller. I cut the top off of its 
counterpart and you'll see in a minute what it looks like. The marigolds are doing amazing. Some of them are aging out, but they're really pretty. We grew these together from seed as well this year. Nasturtiums, this one will be a Alaskan mix. Look at that leaf. Isn't that just, just insane? I, I don't know what to say. It's so pretty. And every single one is different. And every single one is so pretty. Even if there aren't many flowers, this is so beautiful, but it will have lots of flowers. In this bed, it's a lot of repeats, obviously. I like a lot of the same stuff. There's an oregano tucked back in here. And then another shiso. This one's a little bit yellow. Uh, I'm not sure if it's sunburn or like from fertilizer issue, but we'll see. Another snapdragon, some more of that blue salvia here, some more cosmos. These are some beautiful fuchsia purple ones. Another shiso here and another marigold. This basil is so beautiful. Anyway, also I've got parsley here, some more of those beautiful um, coleus, these beautiful wave petunias. Aren't they so pretty? I've got lots of these. My mom grew these. She grew so many plants uh, of petunias. You'll see throughout the garden, they're all over the place. Uh, so thanks mom for all of these amazing petunias. Okay, this is what my one blooming nasturtium looks like right now. So this is probably five or six plants in here. And look at this, there's this beautiful dark red, some happy, happy orange ones. Look at that beautiful golden yellow one. Obviously there's some damage on these older ones, but look at that. And there's a yellow one in here too. That's so pretty, such a pretty mix. I'm not really sure, but I think these will scramble around. And even if they don't, I have planted, here's a nasturtium, here's a nasturtium, here's a nasturtium, here's a nasturtium. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So it's okay if these ones don't climb too much because I'm hoping that we're gonna have basically this huge hedge sort of coming over here so this is that first garden bed and it's about like almost four feet um by like 10 feet anyway so this is the june look at the city garden what do you think so far for me right now it's the nasturtium leaves and the million bells, they're grabbing my eyes every day. And the petunias, gosh, I really do love all of them. But let's move on to what we've got in these pots. I've got a hanging basket and a pot, and then we'll move into the shade garden next. Okay, so here, ignore this, I'm still finishing up. Um, but anyway, here I've got a red castor bean, a uh, beautiful chamomile, some awesome petunias. There's a vinca back here, a pink one, and then a white vinca. This is some more of that bronze snapdragon. Very excited to see those. This is, I don't know what this is. This is a, something from my mom. So, oh, it's labeled. It is snapdragons. Oh, okay, this is snapdragons too, weird. Uh, more basil, of course. This is just normal sweet basil, but I also in the same pot have the lettuce leaf variety too. Isn't that so pretty? Such a good texture. Anyway, more million bells and more petunias. So there's that. And this one up here is all nasturtiums and petunias. This one's so healthy, no animals have gotten to it at all. You'll see the next one from the same basket uh, it doesn't look the same. We actually had to take it down, but this one has some purple lemon basil in it, some nasturtiums, and these just absolutely insane petunias. Are you kidding me? Look at them. The camera doesn't even capture how insane it really looks. They look like velvet. Ugh, okay. 
So this area kind of stays in the shade uh, most of the day, like the shade stays for about all of this way and then this stuff gets sun for like part of the day. So I put a lot of shade loving plants in here. Um, this isn't a shade loving plant, but outside light is a little harsh for my Monstera. So Monstera is living here for the summer. We've got a planted uh, planter with some Shiso and some Impatience. These ones are really pretty fuchsia color. And then my mom gave me a fig tree today. I'm just <laughs> borrowing it for the summer just for the vibe and maybe we'll get a couple of figs. It's so small though, so I don't know. I've got a whole planter here full of mint, um, but I did add some impatience just to try and add a little bit of color to a, a pot full of mint, but this is chocolate mint and it is so lovely. I use it for tea usually. Uh, in this one, another castor bean. This is just for visual beauty. There's no like function of this for me, um, but it's gonna get really big, like hopefully like huge like this. And the leaves will be gigantic. That's the hope. Anyway, under this castor bean, I've also got a marigold, some uh, more coleus, some kale, some bok choy, some Swiss chard, and then nasturtiums. You're gonna notice there are nasturtiums planted in almost everything <laughs> in the whole garden. Also here is a beautiful begonia my mom gave me. Um, we actually had this in the garden last year. You might remember it. It was in our shade garden and it's a beautiful yellow begonia. Well, I gave it back to my mom when we moved back out of the farm and my mom gave it back to me this spring. So now we're gonna have those beautiful yellow flowers again this year. Looking forward to those. Look at those leaves. Don't those look like just dinosaur? So pretty. And look at this texture. And it looks so prickly and mean, but it's not. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so moving on to this pot. This is actually an indoor plant here. This is, um, um, hello. Interrupting my filming. Never. Okay, back to this. So this big pot, you can see the edge of it. Here's the handle. This is actually an indoor plant. This is my bird of paradise. You can see. Uh, but I have her outside for the summer. And, um, and I've put a plant pot, or this planter, I've put on top of it to cover the dirt so the squirrels won't dig in this bird of paradise pot. But also because this, which used to be hanging, kept getting completely dug up by the squirrels. And I'm trying to keep it a little bit away. They like to climb down this thing or down this tree and then they dig in these. And they don't dig like big holes, but they'll screw up things that are planted. Like this, you can see this petunia is all loose because a squirrel dug it up. So I'm gonna have to fix that and add more dirt. But anyway, hopefully this will help. Also, I planted mint in this planter, but this is a sweet spearmint and it's different than the chocolate mint and it's different than the wild mint. Okay, next. Here we have Alex the lemon tree and I actually just noticed he is doing the most today. Um, he's been kind of not doing much growing since the last big flush of leaves, which is where we got these guys. You can see the older leaves are these small ones. And then we had a big flush of growth for these big ones, but that was a while ago. Well, now it looks like we're about to have another flush of growth. We've got all new baby stuff coming. And this just came out in like the last couple of days. So there's one, two, three, four growth points just on this one branch here. And then look down here, another, another. And then there's another coming out of that armpit. They're just all over the place. They're coming out of everywhere. Look, there's another one right here. Back here, there's another one. Oh my gosh, they're so adorable. Anyway, so I'm guessing Alex is a happy camper. So that's awesome, doing good. We won't get lemons or anything this year, but at least we could get some good growth because I did a really hard prune in the spring, if you guys remember. We did that on stream together. Next, I have a planter with an elephant ear in it. My mom gave me this uh, earlier in the spring and it's coming along pretty good. Uh, this is one that overwinters as a bulb. So after it finishes for the season, you cut the leaves off and you keep the bulb and then you plant it again the next year and it makes all new leaves. 
Isn't that neat? Anyway, this is all from one bulb. It looks like there's three growth points, but it's all coming off of like one onion potato type thing. Anyway, in this pot, there's also some basil and some chamomile. There's a lot of chamomile and a lot of nasturtium. This must have snuck in. Yeah, look, I must have accidentally dropped a nasturtium seed. It rooted and grew a whole plant. I'll let it survive because I love nasturtiums. Anyway, there's a lot of nasturtiums and a lot of chamomile. Another bush bean. I went a little crazy with the bush beans. Over here, we've got a coleus in the shade, an oregano in the shade. We've got some mustard greens over here that are flowering, so we're not gonna be able to enjoy them as mustard greens, I guess, but that's okay, they're still pretty. Um, and then a shade planter with impatience, and I've got my purple oxalis. Frida the third is who this one is. And then we've got our beautiful, beautiful Alocasia amazonica. This got spider mites, so I brought it outside and it is so much happier outside. <laughs> Look at those beautiful leaves. Uh, behind it is a hosta that was planted here, but I do have a hosta in the plant pot, the shade plant pot. And then I also planted some more white impatience over there and there's violets in there as well. So that's nice. I did some, some Swiss chard, but it's not doing well. So I'm just sort of ignoring it. And behind there, you can see there's another plant pot with white and pink impatience. So all along the inside of the shade garden, it's impatience. And then along the outside, it's things that can handle a little bit more sunlight. So from inside our little seating area, which is underneath the tree, from in here, when you're sitting, you get this beautiful visual of all of the beautiful, colorful impatience, the begonia, you get a little bit of shade from the bird of paradise, and it just sort of makes this space feel kind of like a separate area to me. So I have a little terrarium with a fern in it who's doing just fine. But anyway, that was kind of my goal for this space. Back over on this side again, we've got a big tote that was here. I filled it up with good dirt and then added some beans, <laughs> just tons of beans into this pot. Um, and I added some strings to connect to this tree. And um, now my green beans are climbing up it perfectly exactly how I wanted them to and now we've got some flowers which is awesome and then on the purple variety because we're growing purple beans too these are the flowers aren't they so pretty so cute and then there's more flowers over here and oh, there's another one so we should have green beans in a couple of weeks I think and hopefully this is going to be like climbing up here, climbing up here. My hope is that it creates like a whole curtain for this area to like shade out that seating area and also keep these impatience nice and shaded. There is a marigold in here. I don't know if I'll move that. We'll see. There's also impatience planted all underneath the green beans. So the green beans will go over top of them or that's my plan. And in the corner, I also planted a catnip that I found uh, by a pond on my parents' farm. Looks like it might flower soon, which is fun. I might cut some of those off. Check this out. It's a spider that caught a fly in the garden. You see it? It has a smiley face on its back. <coughs> Bless you. I've got these two little pots here. They're separated right now because we're trying to get through a slug issue. So I don't want lots of like dense shaded areas because then you see the slugs come in and they eat my leaves if it's too dense. So we separated everything out so that they wouldn't bother anything. And in these two pots, I've got a Mexican sunflower, um, a huckleberry, a basil, cilantro, and more basil. And then in this one, I think this is summer savory, um, purple or blue salvia, some creeping thyme, 
an amaranth love lies bleeding. Aren't these neat? Thanks, Candace, for these seeds, by the way. Uh, and another green bean. <laughs> I don't know if this is a climbing one or a bush bean. We'll see. So in this fabric um, grow bag, I've got some um, million bells. I've got a cherry tomato. I think this one might be a grape tomato, actually. Um, and I've got some coleus, which, uh, not coleus, sorry, cleome. I've got some cleome. I've got three of them in here, and they're doing great. Um, there's a whole bunch of seedlings coming up, and I'm just sort of waiting to see what's what, because I scattered tons of seeds a bunch of times. Uh, this guy is a variety of green. I don't remember the name, but it's like a some kind of fancy green, and it just sort of tastes like a lettuce sort of thing. Seems like not very uh, productive because <laughs> it's such a narrow leaf, but it's pretty. Anyway, I haven't really harvested any of this to eat yet because it's so small still, but some kind of green. My peppers, these are jalapenos. Coming along really well, happy about that. There's a coleus back there, a Mexican sunflower back there. These are radishes, so that's happening. Also dill, tons of dill in this garden. A kale, another one of those lemon basils, another coleus, this is some zinnias. Well, this is a Cosmo, but those are some zinnias. I'm letting them kind of go a little longer before I decide who to sacrifice. Um, but for now, they're all gonna get to stay. And in front of this grow bag, I've got three pots. The first one has a beautiful chamomile. Look how pretty. This one's doing really well. Lots of little flowers on it. It's still early. It's gonna get a lot bigger than this. Um, but there's a Cosmo in here too. This one's a, a bright pink Cosmo. I also have lemongrass in here as well and whorehound, which is something for candy making. My mom grew it, so I decided to uh, take one home. <laughs> and there's also a marigold and a coleus in there. In this next one, this is snapdragons. I'm really excited for them. My sage plant, well, one of them, awesome. This coleus, which look at this, are you kidding me? What a beautiful thing to be able to just look at outside. Like you can hear the sounds in the background of where I am. It is the middle of the city. And yet this exists here, this magical fairy thing. <laughs> also in here is my lavender. Candace gifted this to me for my birthday last year or the year before? I think last year. But anyway, it's starting to bloom, which is so fun. So this is gonna have flowers. And then moving on here, we've got another jalapeno, uh, more of that lemon basil, a petunia. Love this color, isn't that crazy? And then also a um, calendula coming in here. In this next metal grow thing. I've got a sweet potato that's starting to vine and just come on out, which is awesome. Some fenugreek that doesn't look like it's too happy. It actually looks dead, but we'll see. Um, some more of that blue salvia and also another zinnia back here. Also, we've got some peas very happy about these. They are going to flower anytime because there's some peas over there I'm going to show you that are flowering. And then I've got another catnip here, another bush green bean here, bush green bean here, a calendula, some kale, and also there's some radishes and some kale coming up back there. And those fluffy ones are uh, chamomile. So lots coming along in this bed. Oh, another nasturtium for real so pretty and then this beautiful million bells which i am like pretty much obsessed with it's so beautiful love that it's in its own pot in front of it there is a snapdragon some basil some uh summer savory or shoot i don't remember it's an herb majorum it's majorum um and then basil basil dill another coleus because beauty 
And then back here in this one, we've got a whole lot of oregano. Very happy about that. That makes me so happy. Um, another chamomile and this big zinnia, which is almost ready to bloom. Okay, so in this one, um, we have also another zinnia that is just about to bloom. I think this is the copper zinnia or fuchsia and orange. It's such a weird color. So it's one of those two because that's what I planted. Uh, another tomato that I just tucked in because my mom has a lot of plants. <laughs> I can't help myself. Uh, marigold that is just about to put out a flower. This one should be bright lemon yellow if I labeled correctly, which we'll see. You'll have to come back to see if that is bright lemon yellow. Oh gosh, it looks like it might rain. Okay, back to this. I also have some bachelor's buttons that are just about to bloom. I've got three of them that are making it to the point where they're gonna bloom out of like so many seeds. I'm, it's fine. I'm just like, wow, I'm glad I planted a lot of them because I have three that are going to make flowers. Good. I also have all these peas climbing up more strings. I'm hoping they'll climb up this uh, railing. That's my goal. And we do have some flowers. Check that out. Isn't that pretty? And even our very first little pea. Yay. Also ignore my nails, I'm gardening. In here, this is a very exciting flower for me. We grew this from seed. This is Larkspur. Look at that color. It doesn't even look like a real color. Like with the petunias behind it, look at what is, wow. It is pretty magical looking. Look at that like, wow, look at that shot. <coughs> Little fairy garden. Oh gosh, I can't stop looking at it. And there's more coming. Hey. Cut it out. Ignore that pile of shoes. That's for uh, a different video. Okay, moving on in here. More snapdragons and more snapdragons. There's another bush bean in here. I tucked a lot of green beans and bush beans everywhere because I like them. Another one over here and another shiso plant and another beautiful petunia. And over here I planted more dill because there's never enough dill. So I've got dill here, I've got dill here, I've got dill in this one, in this one, and in that one. So hopefully that should give us enough dill throughout the summer. Next, we've got this one here. We started this one from seed as well. Look at that. It's like, doesn't even look like that doesn't make any sense. How red is that leaf? It's, how is it a leaf if it's all red? Doesn't it need to have some green? It's all red. Anyway, beautiful coleus, beautiful blue salvia, and a little pansy in here. Been adding these to my drinks just for the vibes, just to get use out of them. And also these beautiful million bells. Isn't that such a pretty planter all together? It's like there's yellow and bluish purple and red and pink. I feel like this is a good vibes planter. All right, here is the last planter, another tomato. This one is a sunrise bumblebee, so it's gonna be like yellow and orange, really cute. A zinnia that I actually didn't grow from seed. I picked this up for 80 cents at Canadian Tire. I just needed to save it, it was so cute. And it was clearance and it wasn't watered. <laughs> I moved a whole bunch of bok choy into this planter, so hopefully it will have a better chance to get away from slugs because this is like away from everything. More million bells. So it's gonna be the same color as this. So it'll be like a big flood of it here and then another big flood because this is just one plant. So even though this is small right now, it'll be that big coming out here. And then there's another one of them back here. So that'll come out this way. So. Eventually, there will be a nice big tomato plant coming up like this, tied to this thing. It will grow up this way, and then that tomato plant will grow down this way. These will die off before that. 
Uh, the petunias and the million bells and the million bells will come cascade out and the bok choy will get much taller. The shiso, the pepper and, or sorry, the coleus, the shiso and the pepper will get much taller. So this should be about that big. This all is gonna bush out, hopefully get really nice and big. And it'll be a big, beautiful backyard garden. This is what it looks like though. It's smaller than what we had last year, but I think that we've planted a good amount of food and a good amount of flowers to uh, satisfy my fairy needs. I think it should be something lovely. It's already lovely. I do have a lot of joy from this. It Just tending to it makes me very happy, but I think when it grows in and fills in a little bit more, it's gonna look just even that much better. So, there it is. What do you think? Is there anything that is in here that you don't have or that you haven't heard of before? Because there were a few things my mom grew this year that I had never heard of before. And there were a few varieties of things like this coleus that just kind of took my breath away. So, and this one, look at this. Like, what are these colors? And this one too, oh, it's so pretty. And these nasturtiums, they just, they don't even seem like they should be an outdoor plant. And you can eat it. And this red, red ruffled orange laced marigold's so pretty. I just, the petunias are amazing. Also check this, I think, I know it's the end of the video, but look. Look at that larkspur, so cute. Anyway, and the onion, it's gonna bloom. Okay, that's it, video's over. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Let me know if you want to be updated on the garden. I love the colors. Wait until the snapdragons and the zinnias open up though, because this whole area is going to be like this tall. And this area is going to be like this tall with purple and orange and bronze and purple, orange, bronze. I think that's it. Purple, orange. Yeah, it'll so it'll be like tall pink and then purple orange in the middle, bronze, which is like purples and oranges, and red, it's gonna be so pretty. <sighs> Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button, bye.